Hello, welcome to the Tim Booker channel. Wishing everyone a delightful audiobook experience. Today, I will interpret this book called, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. It narrates the fascinating stories of the renowned physicist and Nobel laureate, Mr. Feynman. What key qualities made Mr. Feynman such an intriguing physicist? He was a great physicist, following in the footsteps of Einstein, and he received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1965. He introduced Feynman diagrams, Feynman rules, and the method of renormalization, which are essential tools in the study of quantum electrodynamics and particle physics. He also participated in the Manhattan Project during World War II, which was primarily responsible for developing the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb dropped on Japan was one of the outcomes of this project. There's a popular saying nowadays, too many beautiful appearances, too few interesting souls. Feynman clearly belonged to the latter category. When you think of physicists and university professors, you might picture people from textbooks or school hallway photos. But Feynman had a distinctive style, earning the nickname, the Little Prince of Physics. Unlike Newton, who remained unmarried and devoted his whole life to science with deep bitterness, Feynman had a profound love life. He also wasn't like Edison, who was scolded by his teacher as a dimwit in childhood and initially worked in a rudimentary laboratory to invent various things. Feynman's physics career was consistently successful. Moreover, Feynman led a particularly rich and diverse leisure life. He possessed numerous skills, such as fixing radios, playing samba drums, painting, deciphering Maya scripts, cracking safes, and even excelling in gambling. On top of all that, he was a master at charming women. With so many skills and talents, it's no wonder he evoked both envy and admiration. This book is a semi-autobiography co-authored by Feynman himself and his friend's son, Leighton. Its inception is quite interesting. One day, while Feynman and Leighton were drumming together, Feynman began recounting his past stories. Leighton was enthralled by the plethora of entertaining tales and was determined to show the world another side of physicists. Thus, this book was born. The core theme of this book is, fun. It serves as a love letter from a science student to the world, rescuing us from the stereotypical image of scientists. It lets us know that scientists can be adorable too. Their world isn't just about formulas, experiments, and data, it can also involve beautiful women, parties, and pranks. Today, we will discuss a few key aspects of this genius little prince and the fascinating things he did. Finally, we'll explore Feynman's proposed methods for efficient learning. Part 1, The First Key Characteristic, Curiosity Driven Curiosity can be said to be a standard feature of scientists. Without curiosity, many discoveries would be impossible. Additionally, Mr. Feynman possessed remarkable hands-on skills, using practical experiments to prove his ideas. Just like Newton's curiosity about why apples fall to the ground instead of floating in the sky led to the discovery of gravity, or Watt's observation of a kettle lid being lifted by steam resulted in the improvement of the steam engine, Feynman's curiosity was particularly strong from a young age. He loved tinkering with various gadgets and was eager to explore the unknown, to get to the bottom of things. At the age of 11 or 12, he set up a small laboratory at home, equipped with everything imaginable, a potato launcher, various circuit boards, and even a burglar alarm. Whenever someone pushed the door, the circuit of the doorbell would connect, producing a sound. He also had a special fondness for radios, often hugging one while repairing numerous second-hand ones that people had given him. Neighbors knew of his skills and freely sent him their broken items for repair. Even when faced with seemingly unsolvable problems during his repairs, others would advise him to give up, saying he was just a kid and it was okay not to fix it. But Feynman disagreed. He had an unwavering determination to understand the problems thoroughly. He believed that after investing so much effort in the initial stages, it would be a waste to give up halfway. This drive to solve difficult problems empowered him to persistently study and master various new skills throughout his scientific and learning journey. Another impressive skill of Feynman was safe cracking, which he learned during his involvement in the Manhattan Project during World War II. Since it was a classified project with limited entertainment, they acquired this skill out of boredom. There were several types of safes, and he claimed that common padlocks were quite easy to crack, as simple as breaking a cookie. After successfully opening one such lock, he warned the group that their documents were not secure and needed better management. While others were puzzled, he secretly entered the owner's room and took the documents from the drawer when the owner wasn't present. 
When the work was completed, he returned the files to their respective owners, leaving them bewildered as to how he had obtained the documents. Later on, the research base upgraded to safes with three-dial combination locks, which proved more challenging. Feynman put in substantial effort to master this skill. He even purchased books on how to guess passwords, but they were limited in providing actual lock-picking techniques. So, he practiced extensively on his safe, systematically trying out different combinations one by one. With time and persistence, he could open a safe on average within four hours. After approximately a year and a half of practice, he had unlocked all the safes at the research base, reaching a professional level in lockpicking expertise. Part 2 You can see that this innate curiosity and hands on ability allowed him to explore fresh and fascinating things in various fields. Besides curiosity, why could he immerse himself happily in seemingly dry physics? It's because Feynman always enjoyed the thrill of discovery, which is the second key characteristic. Feynman mentioned in the book why he liked studying physics. It wasn't about acquiring knowledge but rather playing and exploring different phenomena. Even in everyday occurrences that seem ordinary to us, he would ponder and derive various principles. Once, while dining in the school cafeteria, he saw someone throwing plates into the air and noticed that the school emblem on the plate rotated faster than the plate itself. This simple observation led him to delve into the mechanics and dynamics of spinning objects, explaining the phenomenon using principles of mechanics and dynamics. Eventually, Feynman successfully calculated the conditions under which the plate and the emblem would rotate at a 1 to 2 speed ratio. He shared this discovery with a good friend who questioned its significance. The friend suggested that it was just a fun but trivial thing to study. However, Feynman disagreed, asserting that the joy of exploring such phenomena was the essence of its significance. He found delight in immersing himself in his areas of interest and relished the pursuit of physics. Part 3, another distinguishing feature of Feynman, the third key characteristic, was his ability to simplify complex concepts and explain abstract principles using simple language or examples. He had a famous demonstration known as the Ice Water Experiment, which he used to explain the cause of the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster during a press conference. The Challenger Space Shuttle had exploded in mid-air, resulting in the tragic death of all seven crew members, which shocked the world. The then-U.S. President Reagan assembled a team of experts to investigate the incident, and the 68-year-old Feynman was among them. After conducting the investigation, Feynman narrowed down the problem to the O-rings in the solid rocket boosters. The O-rings were made of rubber and had some elasticity. During the launch, these rings were supposed to protect the interface of the rocket and provide a seal to prevent high-temperature gases from reaching the fuel tank. However, the launch site's temperature was extremely cold, below freezing, causing the O-rings to contract. When the fuel ignited, the sudden change from cold to hot caused the O-rings to lose their sealing function, leading to the explosion. Explaining such a complex technical issue to the nation and even the world required a clear and understandable presentation. Instead of using technical jargon, Feynman performed a classic demonstration at the press conference. He took a rubber o-ring and immersed it in ice water for a while. When he took it out, the o-ring had visible marks from the tongs used to hold it. After a few seconds, it returned to its original shape. This simple demonstration perfectly illustrated how the cold temperature affected the o-ring's performance. This experiment was praised as one of the most beautiful experiments in modern science. Feynman's ability to use an operation as simple as a high school experiment to clarify the complex cause of a space shuttle disaster demonstrated his unique talent in making complex concepts accessible to non-experts. Einstein also attempted to use a similar approach to explain relativity, sitting next to a beautiful girl for two hours felt like a moment, while sitting near a hot stove, even for a brief moment, felt like an hour. In essence, science should serve our daily lives. Feynman's eloquence even caused some people to doubt his status as a professor. A stenographer once told him that she couldn't understand what other professors said, but she could understand everything he said. Therefore, she doubted that he was a professor. Feynman's ability to simplify complex matters and make them understandable not only made him an expert in physics but also a physics teacher during his lifetime. In his teaching, he emphasized fostering students' ability to apply knowledge since he believed that knowing how to apply principles was more critical than merely memorizing them. For instance, due to a U.S. government project, Feynman taught physics in Brazil for a period. 
When he arrived in Brazil, he was shocked to see many Brazilian children purchasing physics books in bookstores. These Brazilian kids started learning physics much earlier than their American counterparts, but Brazil had never produced any scientists. During classes, he found the reason for this phenomenon, the students only knew how to memorize without being able to apply what they learned. He asked the students a question from the textbook, and they could answer it accurately. However, when he asked a similar question in a different context, they couldn't respond. Most of them struggled to complete the application problems he assigned. Therefore, the students didn't like his teaching approach. In his annual speech, Feynman used an analogy to explain the situation. He spoke of a Greek scholar who traveled to a country where nobody understood Greek. Yet, everyone was diligently learning Greek. When the scholar asked them about Socrates' discussions on truth and beauty, they couldn't answer. However, when he inquired about Socrates' words in the third dialogue, they could fluently recite the beautiful Greek sentences. In reality, Socrates' words in the third dialogue were about the relationship between truth and beauty, but they were never so rigidly defined in the book. He believed that Brazilian education had fallen into a similar pattern. Thus, he strongly criticized this educational approach, emphasizing the importance of knowledge application and the need to avoid rote memorization. Part 4, with his curiosity, boundless knowledge, and exceptional learning ability, Feynman possessed a remarkable talent for learning, which is his fourth key characteristic. This ability extended far beyond the realm of physics, he pursued diverse interests, such as painting and learning to play the samba drums. Anything that piqued his interest, he would eagerly try his hand at it. Feynman's foray into painting began when he befriended a painter and playfully challenged him, teach me how to paint, and I'll teach you physics. The two agreed, and under the painter's guidance, Feynman's artistic skills flourished to the point where he held a personal art exhibition. Surprisingly, some of his paintings were even sold. Eventually, his art evolved to include nude paintings, one of which was initially intended for a massage parlor in the red light district but ended up being purchased by the meteorological office and displayed in their office. While in Brazil, a U.S. consulate staff member who knew of Feynman's fondness for samba music informed him about a samba band that practiced weekly at their home and invited him to listen. Feynman was immediately drawn to a small instrument in the band called the Tapandero and decided to learn how to play it. During the carnival in Brazil, he even performed with the band during the parade. It's quite extraordinary to imagine a foreign physics professor taking part in Brazil's local music during the festivities, a true crossover experience. Upon returning to the U.S., he became a drummer for the Caltech Ballet Troupe, further showcasing his diverse talents. Aside from painting and music, Feynman also delved into deciphering Mayan hieroglyphs, distinguishing individuals by their scent, and even gaining an intuitive understanding of gambling tactics. All these seemingly specialized skills came naturally to him, showcasing the strength of his learning ability. Part 5 One could say that Feynman was a born scientist, exhibiting scientific qualities from a very young age. His father's education played a crucial role in shaping these qualities, and his educational approach remains valuable even today. Feynman's father provided him with an open style of education, allowing him to observe nature extensively and encouraging imaginative thinking. While Feynman was still sitting in a baby chair, his father brought him many blue and white tiles used in toilets. Together, they set up the tiles like dominoes, or arranged them in patterns based on their colors. When his mother questioned the fun in such an activity, his father explained that he was teaching Feynman about permutations in mathematics. At an age when other kids were playing with stuffed toys and toy cars, Feynman's father had already begun introducing him to mathematics in this enjoyable and intriguing manner. Feynman's father often read the Britannica Encyclopedia to him, using vivid language to describe abstract concepts. For example, when talking about a dinosaur's height being 25 feet and its head 6 feet wide, his father would offer explanations in more tangible terms. He'd say that 25 feet was approximately as tall as a two-story building, and 6 feet was wider than our windows. With such vivid explanations, the size of the dinosaur became clear in Feynman's mind. His father had a knack for transforming abstract concepts into something tangible and relatable, laying the foundation for Feynman's analytical thinking. Furthermore, his father encouraged him to think imaginatively. For instance, he would pose questions like, if you encountered Martians and they asked you why humans sleep at night and eat food, how would you answer them? Encouraging Feynman to contemplate such seemingly absurd questions cultivated his love for thinking deeply. 
His father's education not only provided Feynman with knowledge but also instilled in him a habit of keen observation. One day, while playing with a toy carriage, he noticed the peculiar movement of a ball inside the carriage's bucket. The ball moved backward when pulling the carriage and forward when it stopped. Intrigued, he sought out his father, who explained that this was due to inertia, a physical phenomenon. This method of education allowed Feynman to approach the world with curiosity, persistence, and a desire to understand everything with his own mind. It laid the groundwork for his future as a scientific prodigy. Part 6 In the previous section, we discussed Feynman's intriguing life. Now, let's delve into Feynman's unique learning method. In the book, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, the author mentioned Feynman's core learning technique, which involves confirming one's understanding of a concept by explaining it clearly to someone else. In simpler terms, it means consolidating your knowledge through paraphrasing. Feynman's learning technique comprises four steps. Step 1, identify a learning concept. Choose a concept you want to learn and write it down on a blank piece of paper. For instance, if it's a mathematical concept like functions, write down the definition of functions at the top. Step 2, retell the concept to someone else. On the same paper, jot down your understanding of the concept and imagine explaining it to someone else. During this retelling process, you'll discover which parts you can explain clearly and where you might struggle. If you encounter difficulties, it indicates that you either haven't fully grasped the knowledge or need to improve your explanation skills. These are the aspects you need to study further. Step 3, correct mistakes and dive deeper. Take the parts you had trouble explaining and study them again. Research various sources until you can fluently write about those previously unclear aspects. Step 4. Review and simplify. After understanding all the learning concepts, use your own words to retell them. This step acts as a self-assessment to test your grasp of the knowledge. If you can explain the concepts in a way that others can understand, it means your learning has been successful. To summarize, the book described the fascinating life of the scientist Feynman. Firstly, I mentioned four key characteristics, his intense curiosity, ability to simplify complex matters, maintaining a sense of enjoyment in the world, and the drive to learn many enjoyable skills. Secondly, we discussed how his father's open educational approach during his upbringing emphasized understanding the principles behind things rather than simply memorizing concepts. Lastly, we explored Feynman's learning rule, which involves identifying the concept to learn, paraphrasing it, correcting mistakes, and consolidating knowledge through practice. Feynman was a scientist with a childlike spirit, always assuming he was ignorant, and he maintained a skeptical attitude and a keen interest in verification. He would forever persevere and remain determined to accomplish whatever he set his mind to. In our busy lives, we too can try to maintain excitement and curiosity for everything we encounter, immerse ourselves in our interests, and cultivate ourselves into intriguing individuals. Thank you all for listening to the Tim Booker channel. Please subscribe to the Tim Booker channel, like, and share this valuable knowledge with your friends. Let us combine wisdom with practice to achieve our financial goals and create a better future. Thank you all, goodbye.